I've been working on a Kingdom Hearts inspired game for over 1000 days. It all started in 2022 when I had just finished my previous game Monster Showdown and I started thinking of which game to work on next. There were many ideas I had but one stood out the most to me, making a Kingdom Hearts inspired game. I've been in love with Kingdom Hearts ever since the first game came out in 2002. My mind was blown when I saw the Kingdom Hearts TV commercial for the first time. Disney and Final Fantasy characters mixed into one world and story was a fantasy dream for me. And so I fell in love with the game from the first moment I saw it. And my love only grew after playing the first game and the games after it. On top of all the awesome characters and story, I loved how they combined the 3D platforming of Mario 64 with the RPG mechanics of Final Fantasy. Having grown up with both of those game genres made this the perfect game for me. So after having worked for over 10 years in the game industry, making mobile games, VR games, and PC games, I felt like it was time I made my dream game. Inspired by my favorite game Kingdom Hearts, alongside other games like Final Fantasy VII, Persona 5, Undertale, and animes like Digimon, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Fate Zero, and many others. To get things started, I create a project with a third-person template, as it provides me with the basic systems for a third-person action game. Then I prepare the playground scene with checker textures to help get a better feel of the size and distance of things. To have the right art style and vibe from the get-go, I got a character and wooden sword model to use for the time being until I start designing and creating the main character of Luminous Realms. With that already, it's time to start creating gameplay mechanics. At first, I thought the camera system would be pretty simple and straightforward, but I quickly realized that there is so much more complexity to the camera system in Kingdom Hearts. After closely watching and researching the camera in Kingdom Hearts, I started to understand why it works so well with all the crazy and fast-paced gameplay. I tried to match the FOV, angle and distance of the camera by switching back and forth between Kingdom Hearts 2 and my game. To best match everything, I went to this special website called the Model Resource that contains all kinds of 3D models from different games and got the Strange 3D model to put it temporarily as a reference in the game. It's a really great resource to study and learn from the veteran artists and designers who worked on these big great games. Just be cautious and make sure not to add any of these models and textures into your game and forget to remove them and make sure to only use them for practicing and learning purposes. Finally, after I got everything matching exactly like Kingdom Hearts, I added the finishing touches with the camera smoothing in and out of movement and the zooming in and out system when looking up and down. And with a final cherry on the top with a reset system to put the camera back into its place. Next, I moved on to the movement system and getting that right was extremely crucial. If the timing and speed are just a little bit off, things won't feel right when playing the game. While playing Kingdom Hearts 2, I measured the speed of Sora by measuring the time it would take him to walk a certain distance and based on that I would be able to get the speed value for my character's running speed. I used the same technique to get the acceleration speed, jumping height, jumping speed and gravity force. With that, I had the movement feeling more fluid and responsive, which is what always gave Kingdom Hearts over other games that extra agility. I then took a bit of a detour and worked on the shadow system of the character. I got a little excited to create the system after watching Mirza Beige's video on how to create shadows in Unity based on how it worked in Kingdom Hearts. Fun fact, Kingdom Hearts has no real-time lighting and shadows due to the hardware limitations of PlayStation 2. It used techniques like vertex coloring, shadow volumes, and material color switching to simulate the feeling of real-time lighting. Huge thanks to Mirza Beige and his great work on deconstructing all kinds of techniques used to make Kingdom Hearts on the PlayStation 2. Check out his channel to see more great deconstructing and game dev content. So for the shadow system, I basically have a top-down projection of the character rendered below to give the effect of real-time shadows. Now some of you may ask, why am I creating shadows using this old PlayStation 2 optimization technique that is no longer required with today's gaming hardware? Well, the reason for that is I just find it really interesting trying to learn and recreate all these optimization techniques, as I'm a huge fan of crazy tricks they used to pull off back in the early days of 3D consoles. Additionally, it can later be a great benefit for me to have Luminous Realms highly optimized to possibly be able to release it on lower-end hardware such as Nintendo Switch and maybe even smartphones. One of the most essential mechanics in 3D action adventure games is the lock-on system that allows the player to lock on to enemies and objects in the game. For games like Dark Souls, the lock-on system can be pretty straightforward by just having the camera focus on the target while staying behind the player. Whereas in games like Kingdom Hearts and The Legend of Zelda, the lock-on system is a little bit more complex by having it focus at the midpoint between the player and the target. It also needs to make sure the player and the target doesn't go off the screen and if they do get close to the screen border, the lock-on system needs to reposition the camera to make sure they're both on the screen. This system has been by far the most difficult and time consuming to make, taking me over 4 days to complete and even after I was done with it there were still a few more issues that needed to be polished but to avoid spending too much time on one mechanic I decided to leave it in its current working state and come back to it later to polish it up a little bit more. Next I went back to the player character and added the hanging mechanic to allow the player to hang from ledges. The biggest challenge in this mechanic was setting up a ledge detection system that would be able to check if there is any ledge for the player to grab onto. Games like Assassin's Creed have a super advanced ledge detection system that would pre-calculate all the possible ledges 
glitches that the player can grab onto before they even choose to do so. In my case, I just need a very simple detection system that just checks if a ledge exists at a certain distance and height from the player. This adds a lot to the gameplay and allows the player to try doing riskier jumps and be able to hang off platforms that were too high for them to reach just by jumping. Once the player is hanging, they can let go and fall down from the ledge or get over it with a cool air flip. Fun fact, in Kingdom Hearts 2, Sora uses only one hand to hang from a ledge so that the game doesn't need to do any complex calculations to check where each hand has to grab onto for uneven or smaller ledges. At the moment, I don't have a one-handed ledge grabbing animation to use, so I'm going to make do for now with my two-handed ledge grabbing animation. While I was creating all these mechanics, I got super excited to make player HUD UI. It's something you see all the time in Kingdom Hearts and it's such an iconic thing. I created some textures for the HP and MP bar, but I didn't have any artwork for the character avatar. So I searched around for artists that draw in a similar art style as Tetsuya Nomura. So I got in touch with a few and ended up working with the artist Reverse Crown, who does great Kingdom Hearts inspired artworks. After a few back and forth, Reverse Crown made an awesome headshot artwork for my temporary character. Make sure to check out his Twitter and see all of his other great artworks. To make it all work in the game, I created a basic HP and MP system to use for the player and connected everything to work together. With that already, I went on to create the UI system with all the typical animations and effects seen in Kingdom Hearts. With the HP system implemented, I got excited to add a defeated sequence for when the player dies in the game. And so I got a defeated animation, added that to the game, programmed in a defeated sequence for when the HP goes to zero, and BAM! Now I have a nice little sequence for when the player is defeated. Going back to the movement system, I decided to add dodge rolling. It was pretty straightforward setting up the animation and adding a system that moves the player forward at a specific speed and distance while the animation is playing. I always felt dodge rolling really added a lot of agility to action games. Finally, to wrap up the overall movement system for the player, I added in a glide mechanic as seen in most Kingdom Hearts games where the player is able to jump and then glide in the air across a long distance. Programming this was super easy where I just had to reduce the gravity and increase the air control of the player while they fall slowly after performing a jump. Really feels great to fly around like that. A gliding system like this can allow for a more interesting stage design where the player needs to reach a certain place on the stage by gliding to it. But as I started working on the combat system, a big mistake became very apparent to me. The way I was putting together abilities will slowly start to get out of hand. And we're talking about a game that's inspired by Kingdom Hearts, which is very well known to have hundreds of abilities. So what exactly was I doing wrong? First, I was using true and false states called booleans for each ability and their states. This was fine initially, when I only had one or two abilities. But as I started to make more and more, the number of booleans I had to check became way too much with each new ability. Secondly, I was using unconventional hacky ways to do ability movements. For example, when I implemented the dodge roll, I had to push the player forward over a set amount of time, and I did that using a timeline, which is not the right way to do character movements. And lastly, I was creating and storing all my abilities inside the character system. And even with just a few abilities, this was the big mess that grew inside of the character system. Now imagine that, but with hundreds of abilities. It would be impossible to manage all that in one place. So how do I fix this all and avoid all these issues? I've been wondering this for many years while working on my previous games. And one day while randomly searching online for an unrelated topic, I found a video talking about something called the gameplay ability system. That took me down a rabbit hole of learning about this massive intricate system that Epic Games developed for Unreal Engine that is specifically designed to make the process of creating and managing abilities easier. This was created for games that have to juggle with many different abilities like Street Fighter, Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy and Fortnite. Now some of you may ask, why doesn't every developer use this gameplay ability system? Here are some reasons why. Firstly, it's not a straightforward system to use and needs some time to learn and get used to. Secondly, it's not designed for all types of games, and it's mainly focused on gameplay heavy games like RPGs, fighting games, action adventures, and so on. And lastly, it involves working with C++, <laughs> which tends to scare away many developers. So what I did was I spent three entire weeks learning everything I could about the gameplay ability system and following a bunch of tutorials here and there on YouTube on how to properly set up everything. It was a little bit challenging because I didn't understand anything for the first few days. But by the third week, I had learned the basics and I was able to get the gameplay ability system set up in my game, Luminous Realms. From there, I just remade all the abilities I made previously and made them using the gameplay ability system, which significantly improved the ability's robustness and made them more flexible. And with that, I'll be able to create abilities much easier and more organized in the future. So I put that aside and worked on some easier features like adding a new playground stage to better test gameplay mechanics, item drops that give the player HP, MP and gold, 
a level up system, a basic command menu, the much requested pause menu, a main menu for luminous realms, a quick overhaul for the UI of the game. And after promising it for so many months, I finally made the combat system. At first it was a bit weird and it felt repetitive. I showed my progress to the Discord and I got a lot of feedback regarding the new combat system. One of which was from Ijaz, who showed me this cool Kingdom Hearts 2 video talking about Sora's moveset. That's when I found out about the proximity based combat system that Kingdom Hearts 2 has. Basically, what happens is when Sora attacks, depending on how far an enemy is, or where they are around Sora, or how many of them are there, a different attack is executed. I never knew about that, and it totally makes sense. It felt so natural and so cool when playing with Sora and just pressing the X button to attack. So after finally understanding how that all works, I went back to the game and implemented the system. And now the combat feels so cool and fun! Big thanks to my Discord community for all their help with playtesting the game and giving me feedback. In order for me to test out the combat system, I needed a place to fight enemies, and just dropping them in a normal stage is kinda boring, so I designed an arena where you can fight waves of enemies that spawn over and over again to test out the combat system, and to get a feel of how it is to fight monsters in the game. It was also a great place to test out the enemy AI. Speaking of enemies, I added some new monsters to the game that you can battle. One of those monsters is a flying enemy, and that was a little bit tricky to create because usually enemies walk on the ground and so that's a 2D kind of navigation, but for flying enemies, their movement is more three-dimensional, so that was a bit challenging because it was my first time working with airborne enemies. So I looked around a little bit online and found a cool plugin that helps me do 3D movement with enemy AIs. Also, this flying enemy can shoot projectiles, and that was interesting to test out to see how it works with the combat. I also added a cool ability where if you swing your weapon at the right moment, you can deflect the projectile back at the enemy and potentially hit them. A really cool thing that happened was, I was able to showcase Luminous Realms at a game event, which was held in Akihabara in Tokyo. It was pretty exciting because it was my first time showing the game publicly. I was a little bit nervous about how people will react to my game. But then I was happy to find out that so many people liked the game. Almost everyone who passed by my booth looked at the game. And most of the time, someone was playing the game at my booth. It was a little bit hard for me because I couldn't move around and go take a break to have lunch. But I was able to manage because I designed the demo to just work on its own and restart if someone leaves the game. So in the end, it was pretty good. It was also really cool to see how many people saw the similarities between Luminous Realms and Kingdom Hearts and found that really exciting about the game. I was so happy to see so many people playing the game and enjoying it. And I can't wait to showcase the game at future events. And a great thing I got from the event was a lot of feedback, because I made sure to ask everyone to fill out a survey after they played the game. And based on all that feedback, I immediately got back to implementing all the improvements and new systems needed. Like a guard system to guard when enemies attack you, a parry system where when the enemies attack you and you attack at the same time, there will be different outcomes depending on the power of the attack. Additionally, it was time to improve the camera system, which had a few glitches here and there that needed to be fixed as soon as possible, and a much needed revision to the lock-on system. And so for a weekend, I tried to design a small game area that it's more closed and compact, similar to traditional 3D platformer games. And after creating that, I realized that I really love the style of level design and world design, where it's more compact, which does feel more limiting, but actually with limitation, a lot of creativity comes out. And I'm able to make much more interesting platforming challenges that greatly enhances the gameplay and the world exploration. And so I decided to switch to a more enclosed style of world design, where the gameplay and exploration is a little bit more linear, but still has elements of Metroidvania style exploration, where you explore different areas at different times in the game depending on the abilities and progression you've had so far in the game. And I really feel this style of gameplay is much more fun to develop. Additionally, I feel much more confident to be able to design a story around this kind of world design that is more compact and works better with the story that I want to tell. So after I made this big decision to switch to a more enclosed world design, I started to build a more concrete vision and idea for the game, and the game is heavily inspired by Kingdom Hearts, but which part exactly are they inspired by and which Kingdom Hearts game exactly does it draw inspiration from? And so I decided to focus on the 3D platforming and exploration of Kingdom Hearts 1 and the complex intricate combat system of Kingdom Hearts 2 and combine those both into one game. And aside from Kingdom Hearts, I'll be drawing many other inspirations from other games and media out there. Well, I'll be drawing a lot of inspiration from different Final Fantasy games that I've played over the years for the character design and world design. Additionally, a lot of the story and characters will also be heavily inspired by the Digimon franchise, specifically Digimon Adventure 1 and 2, which was one of my favorite animes that I used to watch growing up and I still love to this date. And now that I have started getting a better idea of the game design, I wanted to put all of them together into one place so I can stick to a vision and not stray away from it too much. And so I started to use Milanot, which is a really great website for planning and documenting any kind of project and specifically for games 
and in it I started to put together the game loop, all different mechanics and designs and I also started to research different kind of art styles for the game from different games I grew up playing and that gave me a much better idea of the scope of the game and how much is required of me to make it and if it's even possible for a solo developer to make it. So this has helped me a lot to get a better idea of the scale of this game and how big I should make it. So with this more compact world design I wanted to have different smaller areas in each realm that the player can travel between and for that I would need a transition system. And so I developed a transition system where you can go between different areas of the game. Then I implement a really crucial system which is the save system with a save point that you can go to to save your game and be able to load different save slots depending on the different game modes you chose. And it also saves all your progress with the XP level and gold you've gained so far in the game. This took quite some time to get right because sometimes the treasure chests in other rooms don't get saved and it made me realize how the save system is quite complex but thankfully I was able to pull it off. And now with the current demo everything in the game saves properly and you're able to load from different save files. Then I spent over two weeks working on a complex pause menu where you can see your progress for the game and I also finally added a highly requested feature which is a settings menu with camera settings and also settings for the video of your PC so you can set your graphics quality, frame rate and a bunch of other things. I've had many people complain that their PC was a bit too slow to run the game and with this they can finally play the game on whatever PC they have and I've even tested it on an old laptop with a not so good graphics card and the game ran totally fine at 60 frames per second. I've also implemented a really important system that will help me tell the story of the game and flesh out each realm with NPCs that you can talk to and have dialogue options to reply with. With this I'll be able to put all kinds of NPCs all around each realm that will tell stories of the world they are in and also give you different kind of challenges and quests so you can help them with problems they're going through while them also helping you through your journey. And the latest system I've implemented is a guard system that helps you guard against enemy attacks. This adds a whole new layer of strategy to the combat system and I think it will start making things much more interesting when fighting more tougher enemies and bosses in the game. And as you guys remember, I previously showcased my game at another event last year where I only had the arena mode that people could play, where they could only experience the combat system. And that was fine in itself, but I saw a huge difference when they had the chance to play a whole level and to walk around, explore. And that really shows how combining 3D platforming with action combat mechanics can create a really interesting game where people can enjoy all kinds of different things such as 3D platforming, exploration, doing quests, action RPG combat and a bunch of other things. And I got the chance to showcase my game just a few weeks after I did that weekend test where I built the small compact stage and that really proved to me that this path is much better than the open world idea I had previously. By the way, since last time I've done a lot of changes to the combat system that have made the gameplay so much more deeper. First thing, I finally figured out the lock-on system. It took me so long to get it right and I couldn't have done it without the help of Pandan who's making a Jack and Dexter inspired game. One day as I was scrolling through Twitter, I just happened to stumble upon Pandan's video of their lock-on system that they've been developing, which is very close to the one found in Kingdom Hearts 2. And after spending over a year trying to figure out the lock-on system, I was close to giving up. But when I found Pandan's video, I was overjoyed and especially that they were working on Unreal Engine, just like I am. And so I quickly reached out to them and asked if they could share with me how they were able to make the lock-on system. And I was happy to find out that Pandan was really nice and was willing to share with me the code that they used to make their lock-on system. And after implementing it into Luminous Realms and doing a few changes to make it work more like the way I wanted it to, I was able to finally implement it properly. And actually I wasn't the only one who was working on this. I've actually started to work with another programmer and his name is Sabi Shi, who I found on Twitter, was actually also making his own game, an Unreal Engine, that is inspired by Zelda Breath of the Wild. When I first found his game, I was quite inspired by the way he was making his game and all the progress he was doing. So we got in touch and eventually I offered him to join me in making Luminous Realms. And since the end of last year, we've been working together and he's been helping me out a bunch with programming a lot of the systems in the game. And one of the first things that he worked on was the new lock-on system. After that, I started working on the parry system, which is really important for any action game, especially a game that's inspired by Kingdom Hearts, which has a very intricate parry system. And the way I set it up is that when fighting enemies, if you're able to hit them before they finish their attack, depending on whether the attack is strong or weak, the player will either interrupt their attack or 
both the player and the enemy get parried, just like you see here. Alongside the parry system, we also added a complex knockback system. Previously, you would just get pushed back whenever you get hit. But now, depending on the direction you're facing, there will be different animation for the knockback. And certain knockbacks will make you fly much higher in the air or much further away. And a different animation would play as well, making it feel more interesting and look better as well. Another really important system is being able to push enemies around as you're walking through them and around them. Previously, you would just get stuck between them and they would just all gather around you and you wouldn't be able to escape. But now, you're able to push them around as you walk through them or around them. And this made movement during combat so much more smooth and fun. And depending on the enemy size, it might be harder to push them around. And sometimes when there is a huge boss, you won't be able to push them around. So we can adjust the weight depending on how big the enemy is. Next, I went back to working on the UI system and I added an ability menu. This was something I was really looking forward to adding to the game. Because with this now, the level of system in the game makes more sense where you get AP points or action points that you can use to equip different kind of abilities. And this would also add a new layer to the combat system where depending on the enemy you fight, you would equip different kind of action and support abilities that give you the upper hand in certain scenarios and situations. And in the future, I'll add the item system as well where you can equip armor, accessories, items, and all also different weapons and I'm really looking forward to adding that. Next we added a new intricate damage system where previously the enemies would just punch you or slash you but now things like ground slams and also environmental fire that can damage you regardless whether the enemy is there or not where the fire would be independent of the enemy and would damage you when you come into contact with it. With these new ways of damaging I'll be able to add new ways to damage the player and have more complex enemies that have different kind of abilities. I then went back to the UI system again and this time I did a complete overhaul of the look of the UI and now I've made it fit the story and theme of my game more where previously it was just a generic UI and buttons that I had in the game now it has a whole theme feeling and look to it and I was able to do this because I've been working on writing the overarching story of the game with all the different characters and scenarios and thanks to that I was able to add a unique looking UI design that fits my story because previously I didn't have the story fully established yet along with this theme but now that I have established the story along with its theme and characters I'm able to choose a certain design but recently I was forced to change my game's name it all began two years ago when I started development on the game and I had to come up with a name back then I didn't have a story or a world or anything decided yet all I knew was that I wanted to make a Kingdom Hearts inspired game and at the time I was thinking of making multiple different worlds that you can travel to throughout the game similar to Kingdom Hearts and so I started to think of different names of what to call the worlds and the word that really stuck out to me was realms which felt like a great alternative to worlds and all that was left was to attach it to another word and from all the different ones I thought of Luminous stood out the most to me and the idea behind it was that the realms were originally luminous but were then taken over by darkness and it was the hero's job to bring back light to the realms and make them luminous again. This was all two years ago when I still had just a few mechanics in the game then the more I kept working on the game the more I started to realize the scale of this game and how there were many things from Kingdom Hearts that were very difficult to make and so it was important to reduce the scope of the game but I still wanted to make a game as magical and fun as Kingdom Hearts and I didn't want to make any compromises to the gameplay so I shifted from scope down the gameplay and instead scoping down the worlds. It is really incredible how creators of Kingdom Hearts are able to create so many worlds with so many different stories, characters, environments and sometimes even completely different art styles and that was one of the things that an indie developer like me could not handle all on their own or even with a small team like mine. So that was what I decided to scope down and instead of having different worlds with different environments which would require a lot of different game assets I instead decided to just have one big world where I wouldn't need to make thousands of unique assets to fit different world themes and environments. But compared to the typical scale of Kingdom Hearts worlds, my world will still be quite big and will feel as big as multiple Kingdom Hearts worlds. But then I was stuck with a big problem. The title of the game no longer made sense. What do realms mean in Luminous Realms? I kept asking myself that question. Now that I don't have different worlds slash realms in my game, I tried to come up with different explanations for what the realms meant, but none of them made much sense. It was also making many people confused and made them think that the game has multiple different worlds. Also, to add insult to injury, the title Luminous Realms was a bit of a tongue twister and was hard for many people to pronounce. So I decided to change the name of the game to something else that makes more sense with the world and the story. But at that point, I still was not sure where the story was going. Throughout the two year development, I kept working on different story ideas and I created and scrapped over five to six 
different story ideas, each of which had some really cool concepts, but they were either too ambitious or too complicated to develop. Some of these ideas were stories with branching paths, stories where you could make different moral choices that would affect the ending of the game and the characters around you, stories where you could approach quests and storylines in different orders at any point in the game. But for my first ever solo indie game, all these concepts were way too ambitious and difficult to pull off. After a lot of trial and error, I finally landed on a story that really stuck with me and was well-rounded and feasible to make. Let me introduce you to Faris, a young Arabian boy living in a modern-day city who is mysteriously transported to another world in the city of Nuara. Nuara is a vibrant yet troubled place under the oppressive rule of the evil masked king. This tyrant has plunged the city into an eternal night and filled it with fearsome jinn that controlled the people and spread fear. You play as Faris, who must navigate this mysterious city, uncover its secrets, and fight to restore peace. Along the way, he will encounter memorable characters, each with their own stories and struggles. These new allies will join him in his quest to defeat the Masked King and find a way back to his hometown. This story hits very close to home, as the boy Faris is Arabian, just like me, who goes through similar experiences that I went through as a teenager. I found that infusing my own life experiences into my story made it much more alive and added a layer of realism and relatability to the character and story. I still haven't finished writing all the details of the story, but I did finalize the overarching plot from start to finish and will keep adding more and more details as I keep developing the game. So having finally decided on the story, I was able to more easily come up with a new name for the game. I really liked the luminous part of the name and so I kept that. And for the other word, I kept thinking about how the world is stuck in an endless night and how one of the most influential Arabian collections of stories are the 1001 Arabian Nights. And so I felt it was a perfect fit to put luminous and nights together to form the name luminous nights. And so that was the name I decided on, Luminous Nights, a Kingdom Hearts inspired game with Arabian themes and stories. By the way, if you want to support the development of Luminous Nights, you can join my YouTube membership where you get early sneak peeks of the game's progress, concept art, alongside other updates. With the new name, I worked on a new logo for the game with the help of my wife, Pluvius, who's a weapon artist and who's also the main artist of Luminous Nights, creating all the character arts that you've seen so far in this video. This time around, we designed the logo all from scratch and hand-drawn to give it a more unique look and to add more character to it. We also put in a little Easter egg in the name, which has both the English and Arabic name of the game in the same logo, so both English and Arabic-speaking people can read the logo in their own languages. We also added a crescent moon and an Arabian lantern, as those are one of the most iconic symbols in Arabian culture. And with the new logo, Luvius also designed a brand new poster for the game with both Faris and the Masked King and it all came out really beautiful with vibrant colors and lighting. And with all of this done, I updated all my social media pages, game website and my Steam page with the new name, logo, poster and the new story. But when looking inside of the game, everything is still empty and without a theme. So the first thing I did was to replace the old placeholder character with the new Faris design and I worked with a great 3D artist to create the 3D model of Faris and added him to the game. This 3D artist is called Haunted Yuzu, who you can follow on Twitter, was also making his own Kingdom Hearts inspired game that you should totally follow. After that I worked on creating new level environments that give the whole Arabian vibe to the game. When it comes to Arabian environments, I have seen too many games, cartoons and anime always show very bland and simple colors when they show Arabian cities. But that is so far from the truth of how much variety there is in Arabian architecture and environments. And so even with the current placeholder assets, I wanted to start showing some of that variety of colors that can be seen in real Arabian cities. Also having the game be all set in a night theme allowed me to really play around a lot with the colors and give a really interesting and vibrant atmosphere with the lighting. I also added a bunch of platforming challenges and added some secret marks that will allow for some more interesting exploration. But the city environment was still feeling a bit empty and dead, so I added placeholder NPCs that are scattered throughout the city that you can talk to. For now they don't have any purpose, but I plan to have much more interesting looking characters, and I aim to have 100% of the NPCs be unique, so you won't find two NPCs looking the same, and each of them will have their own unique dialogue and stories and their own struggles and problems that you will need to solve and help them with. I really love when games have all unique characters which make their worlds feel much more real and alive. And with that I have a more coherent game look with the logo, poster and gameplay that all match the new story. And this all came together just in time for Bit Summit, which is the biggest indie game event in Japan that is held every year in Kyoto. And this time around I got the chance to showcase my game at the event and the reactions to the new theme of the game was really positive. People really liked the whole Arabian theme and many were saying that there aren't many games with these themes and that they are really happy to see a new game with these themes. Also people loved how the game was inspired by Kingdom Hearts and they felt the gameplay was holding up very well. Of course there was a lot of invaluable feedback from people which is going to help me a lot to improve the game moving forward. Speaking of which, anyone who wants to play the game now and give feedback to help me improve it can go to my Steam page and click the request access button which will automatically add the game to your Steam library. And while you're at the Steam page, hit the wishlist button to be reminded when the game comes out. And thank you to everybody from the YouTube comments, the Discord community and Twitter for all their support, feedback and testing. Next after I was done with the event, I started to work on policy 
polishing up all the things people gave me feedback on. And as soon as I'm done with that, the next step will be to start working on the item system and possibly even a synthesis system so that you can earn all kinds of items and rewards from beating monsters and finding secret treasure chests. As I'm preparing to build the item system and crafting system, I know organizing all the data structures and algorithms is going to be very tricky. Thankfully, I've been able to get a better understanding of these topics with Brilliant.org. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Their hands-on approach has been really helpful, especially with their thinking in code lesson, which teaches core programming concepts like loops, variables, and conditionals, exactly the kind of knowledge I need to develop my game systems. If you're looking to dive into programming or even just improving your problem-solving skills, I highly recommend checking them out. You can try Brilliant for free for 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash Dambos or clicking the link in the description below. Plus, you get a 20% off on an annual premium subscription. I'd like to thank my luminous heroes, Ejahaz, Maxter, Sharknips, Brad Cronin, Supersanic, X Collateral X, Sultan, Carrick Lamb, and Nathan Osworth. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace!